joining me today is Mr. S. M. Subramaniam, M. D. and C. E. O. of L. N. T. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, good morning. Uh, hope uh, you're fine uh, at your end, and uh, hope at, uh, all at uh, L. N. T. are also fine as of as we speak. Uh, my first question is about the quarter uh, which uh, went by. It was an unprecedented quarter for L and T. How do you see the business reviving uh, going forward in the next one or two quarters? I think, Sajid, uh, let's understand. We, we, we were doing well till March. We had a very good year last year. We declared good results. And uh, the company is on a very strong footing. We have a backlog of, as of date, nearly 3,5,000 odd crores. Uh, but what happened was something which was unknown, uh, totally unknown to humankind happened, uh, a pandemic spread. And I think the leadership of the country took the right decision in closing out the country in an unprecedented measure for nearly two and a half months. Beyond that, uh, some of the state governments within the country, uh, because of the rise in pandemic and uh, spread of uh, the disease, one had to take uh, local measures uh, in, in various parts, depending on the situation, which is what has happened during the last month and is continuing to happen. Uh, beyond that, at various uh, district, uh, village and taluk levels, much, many, many other decisions are being taken, depending on the local uh, factors of what's happening because of the spread of the disease, due to various reasons. Let's not get into all that. All of us know that. So having said that, uh, uh, whatever we are doing, the momentum that we had, especially on the EPC projects and the manufacturing side, which forms nearly 85% of the company, came to a total halt. So that's like, as I keep saying, we whatever work that we had done in these last three months were with our hands, legs, and eyes tied. Now, what we could work was with our fingers and with our mouth. Uh, so we did that. And what I mean by that is, thus you are aware, LNT has got three parts to it, the EPC projects, the manufacturing, and the services part. So the services, which is predominantly the IT services, have done reasonably well during this quarter in the sense that they were the best to adapt to work from home because much of the uh, people therein had laptops and were used to working from home even at hours beyond the office. Therefore, they could adapt to that very well. Of course, even in that industry, certain businesses like travel, hospitality, automobiles, and oil and gas did see some setback. But these companies adapted to that work from home very well and that with their client relationship and, uh, and such, they could manage their... Uh, their uh, kind of performance to the client at nearly nearly the same levels, and there have been huge appreciation from the clients and the efforts that have gone in there. EPC and projects and manufacturing just would not work because staff could not be present in the offices or in the sites. The labor were all under lockdown uh, situations. Much of them also had to migrate back to the towns and villages to take care of the families and such. And therefore, obviously, there has been no work. In spite of that, if you see, we have booked nearly uh, 23, 24,000 crores worth of orders and nearly to, and produced nearly 22,000 crores worth of sales. So all I can say is it's a deep uh, gratitude to my colleagues and to all of our staff and workmen that in spite of this, we have produced uh, work in this quarter when we are supposed to have shown zero orders and zero sales. Let me put it that way. And obviously zero profit. Mm -hmm. Now, how this has happened is that uh, though it was not easy on the company to adapt to work from home, an EPC projects manufacturing point of view, we took unprecedented measures of equipping staff with laptops, computers, and such. We took it to the houses. To the extent possible, we connected with Wi-Fi and, uh, and network, uh, systems. And we did most of our engineering, procurement. Many of the materials which had been inspected across the globe in many, many parts were done virtually using uh, Vivo glasses, using technology platforms and such. Hundreds and thousands of meetings have been done over various technology platforms. Uh, projects have been reviewed. Many of the things that I never used to review were reviewed during this three months period. Many of the technologies and future ideas and strategic thought process, because we had some time and one could concentrate and go on for 12, 14 hours at a stretch have been done. So I think we have become uh, more agile. We have become more leaner, meaner. Uh, we have understood ourselves much better. There's been extensive communication with all the staff and, uh, and, and our ecosystem of stakeholders, clients and such. So we, we have learned to manage it. Uh, what has not happened is the physical work. And to anticipate your next question, I think uh, we will just slowly getting back to it. Nearly 70% uh, of the staff and 65% of the labor are back, which is huge numbers. And uh, I think by another 45, 60 days, we should be near normal if there is no other uh, incidence of this uh, uh, pandemic becoming from a V to a W, etc. We should get back to what we were, do what we were there sometime in the, uh, in the later part of February, March. 
is it fair to uh, uh, then uh, you know to understand that uh, that you, uh, you know, underestimated the impact of a uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, you know when we spoke about it in the last quarter uh, you hope that you know things will be much more uh, will normalize much more faster now it seems that it may take some more time beyond uh, an, a quarter or so before before things normalize and operations normalize for a company like you Sajid, there's no question of underestimation, overestimation, or any estimation at all. I, we just couldn't understand what this was, and I don't think anybody across the globe understood what it is. We have been fed with an overdose of pandemic news across the television shows, across the internet, across the experts that we uh, care to listen to, etc. and such. So one has to assimilate this information, see what, what is best, and see what could be done. At the end of the day, one has to be realistic and practical as what should be possible. Today in Maharashtra, only 10% of the staff are allowed to come to office. That is a regulation here. In, uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu, for instance, only 33% of the staff and, and such are allowed to come to offices. That's a regulation then. So these are regulations that come in and one has to overcome it as one sees it and take effective actions from that point of view. So we are also understanding it every day. What we try to do within the company is to try to normalize the situation to what was existent and what was our normal operation, that's the existence, of, say, before February, to get the company back to it. So we, we I think, are, are heading towards that and, and pushing ourselves towards that. But if there are local administrative rules and regulations that we need to follow, we are not an exception and we have to obey the rules of the land as they exist in that particular place. Subject to that, I think we will try to get back to what is normalcy, as I call it. Now, whether this pandemic will get over in 45, 60 days, 90 days, one quarter, two quarters, I have no idea. I'm as much as in the boat as you. I also have the psychological pressures and fears in me as much as anybody else. And one needs to see what it is as we go forward. So I don't have a straightforward answer to it because I don't think a straightforward answer is available anywhere. One hopes to God that some genius or some great organization across uh, finds a, a vaccine or a solution to uh, to how to uh, how to tackle this pandemic or, or, or whether there's some way the pandemic mutates itself and such, and thereby we get over it by finding a permanent solution. Uh, that will happen at some point of time, maybe more sooner than later. There are already been TV shows of uh, such solutions emerging in Israel, UK, US, and in India. Let us hope the solution comes and we are able to get over it. Till this time, we have to be cautious, we have to be careful. But at the same time, we cannot give up and we need to... Uh, we have seen many such situations before. We have overcome many such situations before. Uh, but this is something which is unprecedented, getting locked out like this and getting into a fear situation like this. I hope we come out of it sooner the better. Mm -hmm. You know, my question was because uh, you know uh, lnt is seen as one of the proxies for the economy uh, you have discontinued your guidance and it's understandable because it's uncertainty all around give me an assessment of how you see the economy and various segments you know re uh, recovering because you have much more greater pulse on the ground on how sectors are responding and reviving as we go forward See, as we look at, there, there are basically three economies which you look at from a growth point of view. I'm leaving out the services part because that is dependent on US and Europe and you know what it is. From a EPC projects and manufacturing point of view, there are three economies that we look at in a typical manner. One is India, of course, which is a, which is a, which is a big uh, source of projects for us. Second is Middle East and third to a certain extent now is Africa. Now, when you look at India, there are basically uh, four uh, buckets in which the spending takes place. The central government, the state governments, the public sector units, and the private sector. Um, not only the governmental sector, that is the central government, state government, and public sector, used to have a capex of around 8 to 9 lakh crores every year. I guess due to the pandemic and various uh, social uh, and other direct benefit transfers and much other physical uh, measures that the government has taken, there would be a reduction in capex spend for the year. Uh, so what will happen is uh, to revive the economy, to get back people to work, to uh, to get back people to self-respecting jobs, the government, I believe, will get into capital spending. But what happens is that the projects that needs to be done in one, one and a half years, two years, may go to two and a half years, three years, as one sees. So they'll spread the spending over a little longer period than, than concentrating and try to, trying to finish it uh, much earlier than what, uh, much earlier like what they used to do. Uh, this is normal in such circumstances. One tends to uh, one tends to bet on uh, being a little more cautious and careful. So I, I, the government will also do that, and that is good. As we review uh, the the central and public sector units, uh, we find that there are a lot of green shoots which are uh, which are available. 
we see uh, projects in many sectors, especially in heavy civil, in power transmission distribution, in, in water areas. I guess these projects will come to fruition uh, during the course of the year. Some of them, what is Q2 may go to Q3, what is Q3 may go to Q4 and such, and maybe some of it was due this year may go to next year, but I do see projects coming back, and we will try to make uh, make our bets for the uh, better market share and try to get as much as possible as we go forward. The businesses are on it, and they're sharp about it, and I guess they'll get their market share or more. Now, from the, there is also a possibility that there will be a step up of efforts to get multilateral funding for much of these projects because the government is not able to bet, uh, to, to spend. You tend to take on multilateral funding, which are soft loans spread over a period of time. So you'll find projects of JICA, JBIC, World Bank, Asian Development Bank projects in the country. We see quite a bit of it. And uh, we will, we are, we are good in such projects. We have excellent relationships and we have managed such projects extremely well. So I guess we'll have a good chance of securing much of those projects as we go forward. Uh, I don't see private capex coming back this year in India. Uh, like we are trying to cut down capital expenditure, revenue expenditure, and such. I guess most companies across the country will continue to do that. Maybe in some sectors it could be different, but broadly in the sector that we are there, I guess there will be a shortage of spending. Uh, maybe some, I, whatever it is due to the natures of the balance sheet, leverages that, that is there on the balance sheet, I guess the private sector in India is a debatable point from capex point of view it will take another one and a half two years for it to come back this is not to say there will be no private sector spending i'm talking on a broader basis that there may not be the kind of spending which you would test some time back so it will come back but maybe after one and a half two years from a middle east point of view the most critical thing to watch out is the stabilization of the oil prices it went down drastically to even ten dollars etc has come back now to 43 44 dollars most of the studies indicate that they'll get back to 50, 55 dollars by the later part of the year, the early part of next year. If that happens, Middle East will revert back. Again, strategic projects in Middle East are being looked at. There are many power projects, solar projects, uh, water projects, etc., visible across the Middle East. But big spend on hydrocarbon and and uh, and huge infrastructure projects may not see the light of the day as we saw it earlier. Maybe during the later part of the year, it may come back. Africa as a, is a huge continent. We have to go country by country. We are present mainly in the north and eastern part of Africa. As we see it, we do see World Bank, Af African Development Bank, and multilateral funded projects visible across Africa. Uh, we are predominantly in hydrocarbon, power transmission, distribution, and water. Some of our other businesses are also looking at it as an alternative geography. We will keep you informed of the developments. So that's, that is something which you're looking at, and we'll have to wait the developments. So overall, I'm cautiously optimistic and positive that things will happen. May not be in the at the speed at which it was happening prior to the pandemic, but naturally when things go uh, dead stop for some time, to accelerate takes some time, so it will be an incremental uh, push, but maybe a faster incremental push because the need to create jobs, need to employ people, need to get the economy back on track. It's also a priority for not only for our government, but also for the governments in Middle East and Africa. Therefore, I guess that will be on. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, you know, I, I remember you speaking yesterday and you're telling that in your estimate, you know, CapEx may come down by nearly 4 trillion uh, rupees or 4 lakh crores. Uh, and this is, I'm talking about the center of uh, PSU and state together. Do you see this CapEx coming back at some point in time? Uh, or, you know, it will be primarily dependent on uh, funding from multilateral agencies and all. Uh, and that's a bet that you have because the, uh, currently the state and center both are facing fiscal uh, pressure with respect to revenue generation or to you know divert and many of the uh, current revenue has been diverted for social sector especially healthcare so do you see that kind of uh, uh, huge orders being generated through multilateral agency or you have the, the, no, the, no, government, no. the government the government spending will also come back at the moment the priority of the government as it should be and naturally it is towards social sector spending and to getting the uh, people to be safe and and give them uh, what were basic, uh, the, the, and to give them the basic requirements, which is done through the direct benefit transfers, the MDGA scheme, the various other social spending that is taking place. At the same time, the, the government is conscious of the fact that the spending cannot go on endlessly. They need to create jobs and give people uh, self-respecting jobs because you earn your money and you live your own life. And that has to come back. And that can only be done by reviving capex spending on basic needs and or major capex project because that is a big employer. I mean, 50, 60 million people are employed in construction and projects. And uh, that that's a huge source and that 50, 60 million people must be supporting another 
67 people behind the fire you're talking about 300 million people being dependent on the construction sector so let's not forget that every family has got 67 people and the person who earns here remits the money back to his villages and towns and that's what happens and so so do what all of us do right we are families behind us maybe we are the only breadwinners but there's a family behind us therefore 300 400 million people depend on the sector so unless the the spending happens the sector won't get revived so it will be the, I, I'm sure this is the endeavor of the government to spend and I see it and, and I see it because I'm private to data where I go through various projects and tenders that are visible across sectors in the company and I see it. I do see multilateral and other funding agencies also looking into projects in India or projects with multilateral and, and other funding being visible across the country and therefore we are positive that these projects will happen. As I said, there could be some deferment from one quarter to another, but it gives me reason to believe these projects will happen. The very fact that we have booked nearly 23,600 crores of orders and about 60-70% uh, of it is an EPC projects and manufacturing order is an indication towards the point. This is extraordinary because the government system is, does not ad adapt to technology way of functioning so easily because they have a certain way of functioning. They need to have papers, they need to have files, they need to have various people sign it, etc. In spite of the fact that Virtually through the board's meeting, the, the departmental's meetings, etc., they have gone through the offerings that were done. They've gone through the technical bid, commercial bid, and the fact that they've taken decisions to give us a letter of intent is, is to a point for me extraordinary because the government uh, and its people are adopting to technology way of functioning, and that they are moving forward to decisions on such a basis is simply astounding. And it's a great credit to all of them that they are. Uh, moving away from the typical bureaucratic systems to, let me say, a techno-bureaucratic way of functioning. Sir, uh, as a company with uh, projects across the country, uh, you know, you're one of the largest, uh, you know, employers as well for in the construction and real estate sector. Uh, you've seen a huge, uh, you know, micro reverse migration happening in the last couple of months, and you're also struggling for some of the manpower to come back to your projects. How do you see the manpower situation panning out in the next couple of months? And uh, if if I can ask you, is there is uh, is there a risk of wage inflation which now comes in as manpower also takes a, a call on whether to come back or not? And what is a uh, you know a, a positive or negative of uh, coming back? So if that happens from a business point of view, how does it uh, you know your manpower situation pan out? Labor is in two forms, Sajid. One is the staff and second is the labor. Uh, the staff, nearly 65-70% are back to work and balance, I guess, 30% are also working from home. Uh, all of them are not able to come back to work because some of them have gone to their villages and towns. Transport is still not available. Methods of travel is not easy. Second, there are also restrictions on how many people can come to offices, etc., etc. Therefore, they have to work within the boundary limits, but we have frequent meetings at various levels across the company and horizontally and vertically to ensure that everybody is assigned work and people are going about the work to the extent that they can in this virtuality or in actuality. On the labor side, as I said, we employ roughly about 260,000, 270,000 laborers as last in Dubre across all of our sites. Now, this word migration has come into vogue right now, but in a way it is something which is a norm in the construction and projects business. Every year during the holy season, during the Karif season, during the festival season in October, November, labor do go back to the villages and towns and come back. We are not used the word migration for it. We are we are used the word mobilization, remobilization for it. But yeah, I'm willing to use the word migration for it, though I don't like it. This is not really a migration. This is people tending to go back and come back. You can call it whatever. Uh, but what happens is that if we employ, let's say, 270,000 people, 30, 40 percent go back and we tend to mobilize them back. This time it has been unprecedented in the sense that nearly 80 percent are gone back, which is the difference because the pandemic has created a psychological effect on human beings that once it was over, even when they were at site, three months lockdown is a bit too much for any human being. We are not used to getting lockdown like that. And therefore, one had to release themselves by getting back to families to look at their welfare and happiness and so on and so forth and be with this family in this, in this unprecedented time. So I think people have gone back. But at the end of the day, the reality strikes in the sense that uh, much of the people who have gone back or coming back are the real breadwinners of the family. So they have to get back to work. We have backlog on our books, 3,5,000 crores of backlog. That's a huge backlog by any means. And that's a nearly two and a half, three year backlog. So the work is pending at site. At the moment, nearly 
190,000 workers are back to our roads. So we need to get it back by another maybe 70 to 80,000 and we are on the job. Every day, as much as I see the report, 1,500 people are joining us. Uh, to answer the next part of your question, whether there will be a wage increase incentives, those are again normal for us. Every year, four times, we do give these incentives and, and, uh, and bonuses to attract people back because we need the best of people working for us. This year could be slightly less, but please understand labor labor costs as part of the overall cost is about six to seven percent of a project cost, where much of it is material and other other costs. So six to seven percent, even if you assume a 10 percent increase, you're talking about a 0.5.6 percent increase. But it is also possible that with, with the company having got highly digitalized and adapting to better work methods, which we as an organization set about doing two or three years back. Much of this increase can also be got back by better productivity and better work methods and such. Many of us, including many of my project managers, realize that we cannot now work with the same amount of labor that we had yesterday. And therefore, we are trying to do work with less amount of labor and less amount of staff. When I joined last night to grow, the staff to labor was nearly 1 to 30. It had become 1 is to 20, then 1 is to 15. So we're trying to tell our people, listen, we older guys with some white hairs in our head work with 1 is to 30. We do understand projects are more complex and difficult right now, but you don't need to go to 1 is to 15, 1 is to 10. Please get it back to 1 is to 20. If that happens, the number of laborers decrease at site, reduce at site, and better productivity and work methods and digital tools, etc., allow us to do work in a more operationally efficient manner to achieve the same objective as better. So I think it's a it's a it's it's a it's a complex situation. One has to understand it in its total entirety to go about it. Bear on it. I think we will succeed at, on, on the same as we succeed in many other places. Sir, my final question is about China. You know, you have uh, some of uh, the supply chains also coming from China. How com uh, comfortable are you with the supply chain coming from China? And is there a way to you know substitute that given the fact that there are some restrictions in the people are talking about? Uh, there are geopolitical tensions which are also coming in and there's also the government's plan to you know be self-reliant on producing and manufacturing within the country uh, what is lnt's uh, view on that sajid china is now a country which is an enemy country classified as an enemy country they killed our soldiers on the border it's an emotional uh, thing within all of us none of us have liked it so we were to a certain extent dependent on Chinese uh, products and imports. But I think a very serious and conscious decision has been taken across our verticals to see how to diversify these purchases from other sources. Uh, we are on it. I think uh, we've taken the Make in India and the Prime Minister's uh, call for Atman Nirbar uh, Bharat extremely seriously. Uh, we are an engineering company. There's nothing that we cannot do. And therefore, some of these fabricated uh, products or other imports that we're doing had to be made in India or to be got from other sources or, or made by ourselves. Um, you can uh, rest assured that LNT will go all out to see that we can do this on our own. Uh, many, many uh, projects are being done like that. Many, many aspects of the projects are being done like that. And we'll adapt to it very fast. And our guys are quite capable of innovating and coming out with solutions to to make us totally self-reliant. I'm very confident about it. Mr. Subramaniam, I'm running out of time. Thank you very much for joining us today on Bloomberg Quint and uh, good luck for the next coming quarters. Sajid, uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Your questions are incisive and very good. And thanks for plucking out my mind and and uh, and, uh, and taking on the information on a positive note to both uh, your, you and your colleagues and all the viewers. Uh, at this time, I think we need to stand by us, uh, stand by with our government, stand by as a nation. Uh, we need to be self-reliant. We need to be resilient. We need to be positive. And uh, all of you, be safe and take care and look forward to being in touch. Thank you.